Hey, Wargamers, welcome back to the channel, Death From Above Wargaming. I'm Aaron, and I'm coming back at you with some more classic Battletech, Battleytics. And tonight, we are looking at some exciting minis coming in Wave 2. Uh, actually, I've got a whole series of Wave 2 minis lined up for us over the summer in anticipation of that delicious pile of plastic that will hopefully be showing up at my door any minute. Uh, any minute. Any minute. Any, it's got to be any minute, right? <laughs> All right. Well, tonight we're starting with the linebacker, guys. Uh, this is an awesome, awesome clan Omnimech. Uh, love the way this thing looks. It debuted uh, somewhere in like the 3052 time frame. And uh, I think it was in, it was either in 3055 or the 3058 TRO. I don't remember which one. It all blurs together. Uh, but it is uh, it was actually designed to replace the aging Timberwolf. That's that's what the story is. <laughs> Fools. Nothing can replace a Timberwolf. We all know that. Uh, but this mech certainly tries. It's got uh, twin ERPPCs. It's got a couple of missile racks on there. Uh, it's a formidable mech. Uh, and again, as I mentioned, 65 tons. So it's 10 tons lighter than the Timberwolf. Uh, but will it stack up? Guys, I don't know. Let's dive in. Let's put it through the ringer and we'll find out. All right, guys, here we are. Check it out. Some fresh new screens here. I dusted off the old. Uh, green screen from uh, from classic and I refreshed it with that look and feel from the uh, the alpha strike Battleytics tournament uh, so we're also going to see some consolidated screens so I combined some things to make it a little bit easier to understand the data uh, and also added a couple of new things so we'll talk about that when we get there let's talk about the the technical overview though of this linebacker so this is an Omnimech, 65 tons. Battle value is 2390, so it is it is not uh, inexpensive. It, it it costs quite a bit. Uh, heavy mech, and it was produced as we mentioned in about 3052. Uh, so I believe that was actually after the Battle of Tukiad. So you did not see this thing there, but maybe you did. I don't know. You guys that are lore jockeys know some of this stuff better than I do. Um, let's look at look at the movement profile. It's a 6.9 with no jump capability, so it's going to be faster than. Uh, your standard run-of-the-mill, you know, Summoner, Vulture, Timberwolf, right? It's got a little bit of an edge up there, um, but you're not going to see a massive bonus in terms of, um, you know, your your attacker mod or your target mod, rather. Um, you know, you're still claiming a plus two on the walk and a plus three on the run there. Um, heat dissipation is 28, 14 double heat sinks, XL engine of the clan variety, uh, endosteel and ferrofibrous. Speaking of armor... It's got 10 tons of that ferrofibrous, clocks at 192, sorry, 192 pips and 91% total coverage. So that's really good. Um, the CT, the legs, they're, I mean, I wouldn't call them under armored, but compared to everything else they are, those arms are very well protected. Um, and if you look over at the weapons, you'll see it's got twin ER PPCs, one in each arm. So you definitely want to keep those things safe. Uh, and those are upper arm actuators only, so it means you got 360 degrees uh, with those arms, courtesy of arm flipping. Uh, and even if you just want to twist and, and look backwards or something along those lines. PPCs are backed up by a Clan LRM-5 and then a Streak-4 and then an ER small laser pointing out the rear. Um, ammo is located in the left and right torsos respectively, and of course it is a Clan mech, therefore you got case all the time. Uh, so... Excited. Anytime I see two ER PPCs or more, of course, you're expecting tons of damage. Let's see how this thing performs. Offensive benchmark. So first, we're going to look at the red line. Uh, then we'll look at the optimized damage. We'll talk about the baseline numbers. We'll look at the lethality and go from there. Um, so the first thing I guess I should mention is, is our baseline, just as a reminder, is run over 12 turns at prescribed range brackets, and I set the heat cap at four, right? So no penalties. Can't take a movement penalty. Can't take a shooting penalty from heat. What kind of damage can you do? That's uh, that's the white area on both of those area charts, and that clocks in um, cumulative over the 12 turns at about 192 points of damage, 191.5 to be exact. Our red line damage is, what if I just keep shooting? 
no, no heat restriction. I'm just going to shoot for days. What happens? You can see this thing builds up heat and could shut down basically at turn five. Um, so this gets right up to, you know, that red line. It tries to ride that red line. You can see the damage suffering. You can see the area on the red chart behind the white area. It's much lower. Doesn't look as good. 98.5. So you're basically losing almost 100 points of damage over 12 turns. Uh, that's awful, right? So that immediately tells me two things. One, I've said it a million times, I'll say it again, heats the currency for damage. That means we can squeeze this mech for a little bit more damage out of the baseline. And two, it means, you know, you got to be careful. If you run this thing too hot, it's going to suck. Um, and it looks like it can heat up pretty easily. Um, and at the, you know, the basically the most extreme ranges, only find the PPCs uh, and that LRM5. So let's take a look at the optimize. What I was able to do is increase the damage a little bit. Um, you can see the blue area exceeding the baseline. Um, it's not bad. It's about 15.7% total damage. A lot of that is coming in at close range where you're starting to build up more heat and alpha strike. Um, it goes from 191.5 to 221.6. It's a pretty respectable amount of damage. I mean, that's outperforming most uh, Succession War era Inner Sphere Assaults. So that's a very, very respectable chunk of damage. But again, this thing costs 2300 or more, 2400 almost battle value. Um, so will it be enough? I don't know. Let's see. Uh, lethality Index. So the key here is the head kills. I'm looking how fast this thing can kill the Javelin and how many head kills we're getting. I mean, with 20 ER PPCs, I know you're blowing holes clean through it. 13.2% of the time, it's a head kill. The rest is CT kills. You're not seeing a whole lot of engine kills because it's just got these big guns. It doesn't have, even with the Shriek 4, it's just it's not enough small weapons fire to really inflict enough engine hits on this thing. Um, so, you know, you're not going to expect this thing to be a critical hit generator. This is the kind of mech that's going to bore holes in things. Um, and then you can bring your missile mechs or things like that, your SRM boats to bear, um, to really rack in those, um, those criticals, right? So an order of operations in the shooting phase, this is one of the ones you want, you know, ideally to shoot first. Um, so damage per hit on this very respectable 10.3, courtesy again of those 15 point monsters in each arm. Um, critical hits, we talked about that, 3.01. It's not bad. Um, again, it's still got two small missile racks. It is finding criticals. Um, it's just not a crit machine. Time to kill, very good for a 65-ton mech. 7.84 turns is all it took to kill that javelin on average. And you can look at the kill curve. It's pretty, it's pretty good. Um, you know, honestly, it's not like spectacular. Um, you know, 7.84 is, again, good, uh, but it's not... Uh, for 2300 BV, 2400 BV, I don't know. I'm not sold yet. Still love the mech, mainly because of the way it looks. I think ERPPCs are definitely money makers. Uh, but let's take a look at the defense. Let's see if this thing can hang tough, and then we'll go from there. All right, so first things first here. Let's look at the armor. We talked about it. Um, the legs, the CT, actually statistically are under armored. Again, you know, it's expecting 91% coverage. It should be evenly distributed. It's a little under on the CT and the legs. The back is actually way over armored. A mech that fast, again, 6'9", I don't, I don't care about back armor that much. I mean, I would have it floating, honestly, you know, at least at that three-quarter mark. Um, probably, probably at least at the three-quarter mark, maybe a little bit over. I would put some more armor on that CT. It's such an important part of the mech. Statistically, right, it's the, the place that's going to get hit the most. Um, you know, 7 is the most frequent combination on 2D6. So, I don't know. I mean, it's not... Nothing, nothing really terrible, but um, let's move forward here. So the mobility analysis. Let's take a look here um, and see how this mech performed in mobility. I moved this into the defensive analysis for, for one main reason. Your mobility influences how long you survive, period, right? How long you can keep that TMM or that, uh, that target mod right up, the, the harder it is to be hit, uh, the longer you're going to survive, right? Uh, so, in terms of motive hits, this thing was only taking 2.1% motive hits. Now, I changed the way this analysis was, was calculating, and I've, I always found it sort of a little bit confusing, um, you know, because we were looking at the number of actuators hit, and we were sort of making some assumptions about that. Um, this is simply, you know, 
how often are you taking a motive hit? Period. It doesn't care, you know, <laughs> where, how, hip, lower, upper foot, doesn't matter. How often are you taking a motive hit out of the number of times that you were hit in the sim, right? So again, Battleytics runs 10,000 uh, games, essentially, right, of Battletech. And what it's looking at is, you know, you were hit n number of times. How many of those were actual motive hits, right? And in this case, 2.1%. So that means that, you know, if, you're get, if you get hit 100 times, you know, shot 100 times, and hits are landed 100 times, about two of them are going to be actuator hits. It's pretty low, right? Uh, anyway, so looking at the target mod degradation in the bottom, you can see it starts at a plus three. It degrades down to a 2.8. That's still really, really good. Um, and the average target mod across the life of the game is 2.97. So this thing's moving fast enough and has enough leg armor that it's really not seeing any major issues. Um, the crit slots, by the way, on the left and right legs, they are roll again. So as you know, you know, four crits are always packed out, hip, upper, lower, foot, and then there's two you can either fit. If you're an inner sphere mech, you can fit a heat sink in there. Uh, you can actually, but you can fit other stupid things in there. Um, you could fit single heat sinks in there, but not the doubles, and they take up three slots, right? But a clan could put a double heat sink, I believe, in the feet. This guy's got nothing in there. Um, so anyway, legs look good, speed looks good. How did survivability do? 92.4%, that's really good. Um, that's the kind of number that definitely keeps this mech in the fight. Um, you can play it close, you can play it far. So I'm already starting to generate some ideas about you know roles for this mech. Um, if we look at how the kills break down, right, by turn 12, um, the majority of the kills, right, that, that we're looking at here, which is not a high majority, um, are CT deaths at 3.8%. At Engine deaths are the next most common at 3.5%. So just as likely to die by being cored out, basically, as you are to uh, to die from, you know, losing your engine. Whether ammo gets hit and then your case side torso goes, that's two criticals, and you take a third one later down the line, however it ends up. Um, <clears throat> you'll notice ammo deaths are at 0.4%. Um, you might be like, Aaron, it's got case. It never dies from ammo. Well, that's not necessarily true. The way the engine looks at it, um, the Battleytics engine, is like if I have an engine hit, or let's say my left torso is destroyed, and then I take an ammo hit on the right torso, which knocks out two more engine criticals, right, and, and destroys effectively destroys the engine and just takes the mech out of commission, that counts as an ammo kill. Um, that's important. So that's the way the, the Battleytics engine counts it. So that happens very infrequently, less than half of a percent, um, but it still does happen. So overall, my assessment on the survivability, again, very good. That 92.4% uh, number is extremely strong. Probably one of the best that we've seen. I think, I think the Wolverine, like the Succession Wars era Wolverine is up there too in like the 90s. That's like, that's like uh, you know, very, very difficult to kill. All right, so moving on, let's take a look at the efficiency. This is my favorite. Um, this really gives you, you know, is the mech worth it, right? So at the top left... We're looking at effective average calculated damage. ACD stands for average calculated damage. And basically, that's a byproduct of your survivability, your optimized ACD. You multiply them together at each range bracket in the benchmark, and voila, right? You get your, your effective ACD. And what I want to look at is I want to look at the loss between my optimized and my effective. So how far did these lines separate? And it was only 2.7% difference. So our optimized ACD at 221.6, our effective ACD at 215.5. So still very, very good. 12.5%, uh, I believe, over the baseline. You know, uh, that's, that's fantastic. And I'll take that. Um, but when we look at the efficiency rating, guys, we're only at a 6.44. So despite pretty solid damage output, despite incredibly high survivability, this thing only is at a 6.44. So it's to the right of the bell curve. What does that mean? It means it's a good buy. It's a mech I would put in my star, but I was really expecting this mech to be in the sevens or the eights. But then again, I go back to that 2390, almost 2400 battle value. And you you know, you know increase that for pilots, right? For, for higher gunnery, higher piloting. I mean, you're, you're paying out the nose for this thing. Um, 
Let's take a look at the gunnery sensitivity in the middle. So gunnery sensitivity is basically a measurement of your average gain for increasing the gunnery score, right? Like, what are you getting out of this? The higher the gunnery sensitivity, the better uh, it is to increase this mech from, you know, gunnery four to three to two to one to zero. Um, the chart below basically shows you exactly where the efficiency scores are at each of the gunnery, starting at four on the left, zero on the right. Um, so you can see 6.44 at gunnery two. That's where we run our analyses at. If you go up to gunnery one, it's a very minor increase. If you go to gunnery zero, um, a little bit there, but again, you know, that, that, that inflection point is right at two. So two tends to be the most efficient in almost every Mac. Sometimes you'll see the more efficient at one. Very rarely you'll see the more efficient at three or four. Um, but this mech, you know, again, whether you're playing at Gunnery 3 or, or Gunnery 2, I, I guess that's probably the sweet spot for me. Uh, one new thing that I added below uh, is effective damage by Gunnery score. So you can see what would that effective ACD be if I changed my Gunnery up or down. So again, Gunnery 2, we're at 215.5. At Gunnery 1, it goes up to 258. At Gunnery 3, it goes down to, what is that, 168. So, you know, it's substantial. It's a substantial chunk of damage that you're you're either gaining or losing. Um, and, of course, you know, lower efficiency means it is less bang for the buck. So even though you're, you know, you are upgunning to Gunnery 1, you're getting a little bit more out of it. Is it worth the BV? You know, I'm not sure because, again, this thing already is so expensive. Um, but let's talk about threat. Let's talk about roles. Let's see what we would do with this mech on the battlefield. All right, so roles, brawler, cavalry, vanguard. Let's talk about why. Uh, number one, you can get this thing in close. No minimum range, right? You can just nuke things all day at point blank. It's fast. It can get across the battlefield. It can get to objectives. It can do what you need it to do. It can get up in people's faces. It, it, it is it is very versatile in that regard. It can keep up with a lot lighter mechs as well. Um, and then it's tough as nails. I mean, this thing can take a withering hail of incoming fire um, and still be on its feet. And, you know, the one thing Battleytics doesn't take into account is, you know, if you want to be sassy and dump your ammo, right? As soon as you start taking internal damage, just get rid of that ammo. Just dump it, right? I know people that dump their ammo at the beginning of the game, right? Uh, mostly with MG ammo. But, you know, the reality is this thing is doing the bulk of its damage from its ERP PCs. If you have a torso breach, just dump that ammo. You'll probably get that survivability up just a little bit more as well. So those are the roles for me for this mech. I think it's it's just a no-brainer. It's a front and center mech. Even in a heavy lance, um, you can run this thing up the gut and draw fire with it. Psychologically, your opponent's going to see 20 RPPCs. They're going to want to delete it quickly. That's what you get, right? Um, so threat assessment. Let's talk about how just how scary this thing is. Uh, I want to talk about the threat envelope first. 360 degree arc of fire. I can't say it enough. I love it. Arm-mounted big guns are my favorite thing, especially in classic. You can look left. You can look right. You can shoot it out of your shoulder. You can shoot out your back. You can do all sorts of great things with, um, you know, big guns on your arms. Um, and I think, you know, th this mech is, is very well positioned um, and set up very well. You know, again, it's got a ton of armor on the arms. You're not going to have those things get knocked off easily. I think those ERP PCs are going to be doing um, a lot of damage deep into the game. So from a, from a firing arc perspective, again, very well set up. Let's jump back over to the bar chart. That's the threat assessment. So to recap, what is this? Uh, the dark red bars in the background, right? That is your alpha strike potential. This is, I have the best dice day of my life. Everything hits and I do maximum damage, right? All my clusters hit, everything hits, right? <laughs> what could you possibly do? at that given range, right? And it starts at 21 inches, goes down to one. Um, yes, I'm aware some of these weapons shoot beyond 21 inches, but 21 inches is where the analysis starts. The light red is your average calculated damage. That is, I'm having an average dice day. Uh, what does my weapon do? I roll average on the cluster hit table. I roll bang on average to hit. What does it look like, right? So that factors in a percentage of, you know, the damage missing, right? Like, again, if you missed one, hit one. Miss one, hit one. What does that look like? All right. And then the white is 
zero heat HCD. So this is, I don't want to build up any heat. I just want to fire minimum amount of weapons that I can. What does my average damage look like, right? So this gives you sort of like a, almost like a minimum um, firing capability or something along those lines, right? And then this bar chart, when you look at all of those pieces together, it gives you a very good idea of the capability and where this mech is most scary. And, you know, you kind of want to look at those trend lines. The yellow line, right, is heat. And that is not cumulative. That is just at this point, if I alpha strike, how much heat do I build up? All right. So good refresher. Good talk. Uh, so let's take a look at where this mech really performs. As you can see, the closer you get, the scarier it gets. And that sort of underscores why we want this thing in a brawler, a cavalry role, or even a vanguard role, right? Um, at mid-range, right, right around 12 inches, you can see the damage hops up. Um, you know, it can get some more things in range. I mean, basically, um, what we've got here, if you if you look at the key metrics on the right-hand side, the peak zero heat ACD is at four inches. That's 21.8 damage. The peak ACD is 38.5. That's at two inches. And then our peak alpha strike is at basically six inches all the way to, to point blank. And that's 48 points of damage. When we look at the basically your best alpha strike and your best average calculated damage, right? We look at those two maximums. What's the difference? That's that's a new metric we have in the bottom right. It's called our ACD cap, and that's 80%. So 80.2% for the linebacker. What that means is when you alpha strike with this mech at the best possible range you can alpha strike at, you can expect to deal 80% of the damage, right? Which is pretty good. Um, you know, and that factors in the range profiles of the weapons and so, you know, minimum range penalty, anything that might exist, cluster hits, all of that stuff is factored in and it goes into that number. So 80% is pretty good. Um, but again, you know, just looking at the whole threat profile overall, I mean, this thing again, really looking good in that brawler role, really looking good in that frontline role, really looking good in that cavalry role, frontline vanguard, um, whatever you want to call it. But, uh, you know, to me, I would say that this mech is just a good, you know, good all-around solid player. It, it's still that, I'm, star I'm looking at my screen, I'm staring at that battle value, and I mean, it is just, it's wicked expensive. And we've done this, I mean, we've talked about this before, it has so much to do with how fast the mech is. I mean, I bet you if this mech was a 5.8 and had more weapons or more heat sinks and could uh, sustain fire with the with the ERPPCs, it would probably cost less. You pay a premium for speed in Classic with Battle Value 2, and unfortunately this one, this one just falls victim to that. But again, 6.44, it's not a bad mech. It's still very, very good. You know, five is average. We saw the bell curve. This is to the right of it. Um, you know, just would, would expect, was, was, was hoping, I guess, for a little bit more. But that's it, I'm done. I want to hear about your favorite linebacker variant. I picked the Prime. I know there's a whole bunch out there. Tell me which one you love and why. I want to hear it. Uh, and I also want to hear what you think about uh, these new screens. What do you think about the new new analysis? What do you think about the uh, you know the, the new stats we're pulling out here? What's missing? I'm always always love to hear that. Uh, so guys, that's all I've got. A uh, couple of quick announcements. If you want to get some sweet max. Head on over to Aries Games and Minis. Uh, guys, he's got the books. He's got the dice. He's got the minis. Um, I bet you the Wave 1 packs are back out there again. I know there's a whole bunch of reprinting on, um, I believe, Alpha Strike and uh, Total War, uh, Total Warfare, a few of the other main books. Um, they just they just put out reprintings with new covers and things like that. So very cool. You can get all those over again at Aries Games and Minis. Uh, guys, if you want to come help out the channel, you can check us out over on Patreon. Uh, but even before you go to Patreon, if you haven't, please subscribe. All you got to do is click the button. It helps out the channel tremendously. Uh, so we would appreciate it if you uh, if you would just clicky click. Uh, but if you do want to get more involved, you know, definitely Patreon is the place to be. We have all kinds of exciting stuff going on uh, there. Sneak peeks, uh, digital tools, all sorts of things to enhance your uh, battle tech experience. Uh, so head on over and you can check us out there. But that's all I got. So guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this, uh, this first of many uh, Summer of Battletics, as I like to call it. Um, 
I think we got the Stalker and the Battle Cobra. Uh, those are on deck for sure, and then maybe some others uh, as well. So if you have a favorite Wave 2 mech, you know, don't forget to post that too. But that said, guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a great night, and of course, stay tuned. Always great stuff coming from Death From Above Wargaming. Talk to you soon.